Okay, so we're going to start with the landscaping and I'm going to show you a couple of homemade tools that I have made that I use a lot when I do miniatures in general. I use it for just about every time I work on a miniature, I use at least one of these tools. So I'm going to go over landscaping materials first. And there's a lot more than this. Uh, I just hit the high points and you guys um, can chime in later on after I do the little presentation on the tools, then you can chime in and we can add more things to this list. But in general, <clears throat> um, since we're talking about landscaping, the, the basic thing you need to start with is, is your base. And normally we use clays and foams to, to create your base. And there's different types of foams people use. It depends on who you are, which, um, what size that you like to work in and what's available to you in your area sometimes even. So, but we do use a lot of different types of styrofoams and floral foams and things like that. <clears throat> and as I said before, the air dry clays and there's multiple air dry clays that we talked about before earlier uh, last year. There are um, several air dry clays you can easily pick up in your craft stores if you're in the States. And there's uh, the paper clays, there's the inexpensive Crayola clays, uh, things like that. And you're always going to need wire. And in landscaping, you're going to need very fine wire. I prefer a coated wire that's um, covered in paper. You can't always find that easily. But depending on what type of plant material you're working with and what scale you're working with, <clears throat> there's several gauges of fine wires you're going to want for your landscaping uh, to do your plant material. Um, then there's all ty types of, uh, you know, fine and coarse sands, uh, gravels. Uh, there's flocking you can use if you ha even ha have flocking. A lot of times that's helpful in landscaping. The other thing that's helpful are um, if you go to a train shop or go online, anything, anything in the, um, uh, for your grasses and turfs and things like that, you can pick up at, at train shops. And even in the States here now, I think last year or so, Hobby Lobby even has small quantities of these items in, um, they do have an aisle with model, miniature model stuff. Um, and they have some train stuff in that aisle. So I'm gonna click my overhead camera here just a second. And I'm gonna show you a couple of the things that I've picked up to get ready for this year. Okay, so this is a smaller bag and there's all different types of flocking and scatter material that you, you'll use in landscaping. I'm just gonna kind of put these together here. So I have uh, fine turf grass for this one. And what's this one called? This one's called a just scatter material and flockage. I think this one can, yeah, this is from Germany. Um, this one I like a lot for um, if you're doing like, um, like swags and vines. This one comes in real handy for that kind of thing. And then there's coarse turf, and this one's in a different color. This one's called burnt grass. This is green grass. So all of these kinds of things are helpful. Obviously, these large containers, um, if you're working half scale, quarter scale, this is a lot of material. So if you want to buy smaller containers, that would, that would probably work out a lot better for you, unless you do a lot of miniature work every year. Um, the other thing is uh, dry mosses. Oh, I forgot to pull those out. But any of your dry mosses you can get from your craft store um, come in handy. There's, um, let's see, what is there? Deer moss. Um, there's at least four or five you can usually pick up at Hobby Lobby or Joann's here in the States. Then there's... Um, all different types of paints and markers. So you may choose to use a um, acrylic artist type paint that comes in a, let's get back over here, that comes in a tube. 
or you might choose to use a two ounce bottle or one ounce bottle of uh, acrylic paint in a bot in the small bottles. They even come in the four ounce bottle. Paula, we don't see we don't see anything. Are you showing something? No. Now that you've oh. pinned me, I can't get to the um, I can't get oh. to my other screen with my cursor. Hmm. Oh, let me remove. I move remove the spotlight then. That might we'll be why. Pin, everybody will have to pin her. Actually, I was able to switch to gallery view when you had her pin or spotlight. Oh, were you? Okay. Yeah. Okay, what is going on here? I don't know, but we lost you. Hmm. I guess you can, yeah, you can take yourself off of Spotlight, I guess, I didn't know. Yeah. I can't even get my cursor to that screen. Well, that's funny because I- Let's, let's I, escape and see what we can do here. Okay. That Zoom has changed so many things um, just, since I think they've made quite a few changes since Tuesday night. What is the deal here, people? I don't know. This is like a re reboot this morning. Oh, I see your fingers. Is it your yeah. camera? Yeah, my overhead camera is working, but I can't switch to my other camera because I can't get my cursor to that screen. Oh, I see. Huh. This is, and it's unstable again. Oh no, it's our internet. Oh, I don't know if it's the internet or if it's Zoom. I haven't figured that out quite yet, but yes, yeah, something is funky today. Okay, I'm just gonna stay in overhead view. I don't have, I didn't bring those paints over here. But anyway, there's all different types of paints and markers. So you can use um, all types of, you know, your regular water-based markers. You can use your, um, Copic markers or your, let's see, what are these other ones called? Uh, the Spectrum Noir, that's an alcohol marker. Like the Copic, I still like the Copics best. And if people start working with Copics, and uh, this is my favorite, is the, is the Sketch. They make three different, at least three different um, yeah. types of al alcohol markers. And I like the sketch marker because you get this, one, I'm a paper crafter. So that makes a difference for me too. Um, but uh, you get the fat tip and then you get a fine brush tip. So, uh, and Copics really are a, a nicer marker than the Spectrum Noir, but the Spectrums are uh, less expensive. Oh, Copics are very expensive. Yes, they are. So buy them on sale, use your coupons. And it takes a while to collect them. Okay, that's the, the bulk of um, materials. You're, you're used to your general landscaping. I mean, your general, um, you know, miniature tools and um, materials that you already use, you know, your wood and that sort of thing. So as far as landscaping, this is just a few things extra that you might want if you don't already have them. So now on the tools, um, your cutting tools, which you'll need multiple different types of uh, scissors. You'll need um, maybe a box knife. I like to use a box knife. Uh, I like to use this small one. I have this one, which I like to use a lot. This is a standard box knife, um, but I, I do use it. And with, your, with the landscaping, when you're having to carve, you um, and not just carve, but cut out your foam stuff, these are handy along with a, um, a traditional knife, like a, like a table steak knife or even, um, a non serrated knife mm -hmm. blade that's maybe six to eight inches long. That would be a kitchen knife, come in very handy for landscaping when you're cutting your bases and that sort of stuff. And it depends on which time of, cut, type of styrofoam you're using because there's different ways to cut that. Um, I and use- then we don't- I use a, um, 
a drill a lot. Uh, and I like this pin vise, but I also use a, um, I do have a Dremel tool. I don't use it as much as I do. I have another rotary tool that spins at a much lower rate, which I like better, but these types of pin vices come in handy. Um, and then there's dental picks I'm constantly using and they come in a myriad of, there's some with nice handles like this. There's the regular inexpensive dental picks with your little metal handles. Those are always great. And I'm always using them for something. And a ball tool, um, trying to think, I think these have a couple names. I don't know. I can't think right offhand. Stylus. Uh, we call them, I call them the stylus. Oh. Okay, stylus, yep. Um, and these come in a myriad of uh, sizes. So this is double-ended and you can usually get these, uh, let's see here. You can get a set of, I think usually two or three and you're gonna use these with your flower making and you'll use them a lot. And there's several different size balls that you'll use a lot. The larger balls you won't use so much. Um, even with a one inch when you're uh, making your flowers, you're gonna use the smaller two or smaller two sizes. So it's actually four balls um, for your flower making. Now, styluses also come this way with a rubber tip and the, this uh, silicone tip and, and they come in, there's different types of tips on the end. And I don't have all of mine in here because I craft in two different rooms, but there are different types of uh, these silicone tips, different shapes, and they're used to mold and shape clay. If you, um, if you work with polymer clays and that sort of thing, or even if you're using your air clay on your landscape bases, but that comes with a ball end and then you get your little um, uh, silicone in. Okay, needle tools, ball tools. Uh, and then with your ball tools, you'll want some type of foam pad like a, a mouse pad works um, famously or some thick um, fun foam. So, and the thick fun foam, this is about a quarter inch, I believe. Yes, probably. Maybe a little bit less, but I'll tell you in just a minute. Oh, that's way smaller. Yeah, this is um, four sixteenths, it looks like. So you don't want the real thin stuff. You want something that's at least this thick. I haven't seen anything thicker, but... Um, mm -hmm. So you can get these in, in large sheets, which I have those. And I also use, um, sometimes at the craft store, you can, if you're in the kids section, you can pick up smaller pieces like this that are door hangers. So, especially if you're looking for different colors and you don't wanna buy a whole bunch of different long sheets at one time, something like that, then you can go to the kids section and check that out then we like to use magnifiers so something like this which is a third hand and you've got little clamps and clips you can work with it that works great then there are all types of magnifiers you can attach to your glasses i have another one that's a lighted one that uh is uh, uh like a hat a visor hat and I can change, you can change your magnification out. And punches come in very handy, uh, flower punches. And sometimes even the, um, Kid scissors, these are the little Fisker scissors and they do different shapes. Those can come in really handy with flower making. A glue jig, most of us already have a glue jig. You'll use those, all different types of adhesives and you're gonna use the gambit, PVA glues, wood glue, 
painter's tape, super, gel super glue, glue sticks, E6000, all, all different types of glues, even you know, different types of uh, other different types of paint, masking tape, cellophane tape. And then <clears throat> I like to have a handy pair of wire cutters. So you can go to something like this that will cut something pretty heavy, linesman's pliers, so you'll find those, that's an electrical tool for why, if anybody who does wiring. Those, if you don't have a lot of strength in your hand, you get a lot of torque with these. And then there's all types of clamps and clips and um, needle tools. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight is clamps and clips. And I'm gonna show you a few that are my favorite. Because you're not you're not building furniture per se, or not much. Sometimes you're going to build things um, that you know that might be yard art or window boxes or things like that. But it's a little bit different um, on your clamps because I use, especially when I'm doing, uh, if I'm painting something really small, I like to use these little alligator clips or these. This is just a tiny binder clip that I've attached to wood. And here we go. Okay, and especially if you're, if you're painting or you need to hold something that's pretty small. So that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. And even I, earlier I talked about the, um, the box knife. This is the blade that some of the box knife tools you can use, let's get this closer. Okay, you can see this is the type where you break off the, you break off the tip to get a new blade type. So if you have polymer clay, you can make a little handle and use this like a knife. And I use this a lot. I use it a lot with polymer clay. And then there's, um, you know, I get into some other jobs and I'm, I'll pull this out and use it for a lot of things. And that's just adding polymer clay to the end of it and baking that off. So that's one of the types of tools you can make. And you can shape the handle any way you like. And, and the reason I use this type of blade here is because on the end, it has a hole. And that hole helps uh, keep the handle connected to it because I can get that clay through that hole when I bake it off. And that helps it hang on to it. Um, now for my handles, when I make these little tools where I have the wooden handles. Some of the things that you can use are an old paintbrush handle, a chopstick, um, or a dowel. And the dowels come in various sizes. You can see I've got a couple different different size dowels here. And I like the skinnier dowel, but they don't work as well <clears throat> with some of the alligator clips. It depends on what size your alligator clip because of how it attaches. Um, and the other thing when I'm making, attaching these alligator clips to these handles, if you have an old foam brush that you've, you, the foam you've used up, or even if it's a new one, these are pretty cheap, um, take the end off and you've already got your pre-drilled hole. So you don't have to drill it. And the clip, will fit right down in that hole uh, on the alligator clips that I've pur purchased. Um, they fit right down in this hole and I've not had to drill anything out any further. And that's just perfect to make the tool. Um, and the alligator clips, you'll find these in, um, they're usually pretty easy to find in automotive stores. I'm trying to think there is another place you can pick them up. Uh, places like a Radio Shack will have them. Uh, so, and you can obviously find them online easily. Now this particular clip goes into my third hand. That goes on this other side. But, and so it's got this ball in the end of it. But typically <clears throat> this alligator clip, you have the tubing that comes out and then, whoops, you have the tubing that comes out and then that's hollow in the middle. So that gives you a, a good place to get your glue and stuff in there. And I like to add a little bit of gel super glue on the end, um, or not on the end of my metal. And I'll fill that with um, something like an E6000 type of glue. And that works pretty well um, on these clips. Uh, 
and I'll just take a paint or a, a stain pen and stain my handles and clear coat them. And you can round off the ends and edges and make them nice. Uh, let's see, where is this? Or like on the needle tools, you can round off the ends and then you can taper off uh, the end where your needle is attached to. So the needle tools, oh, let me do this one first. Okay, so the binder clip, all I did was take my uh, cutoff wheel on my Dremel and I cut a slot in uh, this piece of dowel. And then I was able to insert half of the binder clip wire, the other half of that down in there. And this is perfect when you need to hold on to something to paint it or um, even to spray paint stuff, it works. But I'm talking about like hand painting something that's pretty tiny. Um, I like to use something like this uh, quite a bit. Okay, the needle tools, those are real easy to do. My preference for those, if it's a small needle, I like to use a, this is a small needle as in a, your sewing pen, your dressmaker's pen. That's what I use this. And that's a chopstick. And that's my favorite. I like this tiny handle. So if you get into the larger needles, you'll need to use something a little bit larger. This one I made, and this is a, just a regular corsage pen. And you cut the end of it and corsage, Corsage pins are pretty heavy and they're, it's a pretty stiff piece of steel and they're hard to cut. So linesman's pliers work really well to cut a corsage pin. And you just drill out the end of it with your hand pin vise or use a Dremel, drill out the end of it. And um, on these, I like to use a little bit of, um, gel super glue and a little bit of um, E6000 to attach these to. And I'm, I've got these in all different size, um, different size needles. Because sometimes you need something that's stiffer. Sometimes you want something that's finer, like these dressmaker pins, especially if you guys, you guys that are quarter scalers. That's, that's a lot nicer than using your standard store-bought needle tool. Just saying. Um, okay, and then the other thing is uh, with the corsage pen, uh, I've just taken polymer clay, wrapped it around the end of the, the pearl, and made needle tools that way too. So that's a really quick and dirty way to do it. Easy, easy, easy. Um, but these are a couple tools that I, I use all, all the time. I don't know if the rest of you do or not, but I, I have usually at least two needle tools out on most projects I work on. So um, I'm gonna open it up to questions. If Barbara wants to unmute everyone. Hmm. And I'm gonna see, aha, isn't that weird? Once I unhighlighted myself, I can get to my camera now. We got to play with uh, Zoom now that they have made so many changes. Come on. Ah, there we go. Finally. I can figure out how to do this. I'm telling you. So, um, I guess first thing, does anybody have any questions on making your own tool or um, are there any tools that you guys like to use on landscaping that I didn't talk about. And the other thing would be, are there any other landscaping materials you like to look, to work with? There's what I've used is to paint stuff. I've used um, a tongue depressor or sometimes you can get in the hobby stores, smaller little tongue depressors, especially like quarter inch animals. You can uh, you know, glue it a lightly and paint it without you having to try to hold it and get your fingers messy. You can set the um, 
the wood down on the table or hang it out of a jar and let it dry and it doesn't have to touch something else. Mm -hmm. That's why I like these, these needle tools and these clamps so much is because I'll take a small, uh, I'll take these little small jars that uh, like little cheeses and things come in. I'll take a small jar and they're, it's perfect. You can put a whole bunch of things you're working on and let them dry. On, the, on that tongue depressor, you can also put some double-sided tape uh -huh. on that tongue depressor and that will also hold your item too. It depends on how sticky you need it. Those um, little uh, scotch tape squares or circles mm -hmm. that you can get in like a Target or whatever, they don't have so much of an adhesive, it'll mess up your, your miniature. Mm -hmm. Use just, I use just double tape, you know. Yeah, there's like a double-sided scotch, scotch tape, tape that works pretty well too. And it's not real yeah. super sticky either. Now, if you go to something like a three inch double-sided tape, that's a, oh, let's get to the right camera. That's that's yeah. the foam tape that's double-sided. That's oh, pretty yeah, that's nasty. Yeah, that's pretty sticky. Yeah. So, but the, the scotch tape that's double-sided, that works uh, pretty well. Yeah. Paula, another thing that has come up on the different Zoom things are these little silicone trays. Somebody will have to explain because I don't know exactly what they are, but they're sticky. And people put things on those. Uh, Preble, I think you use those, don't you? Preble? Yeah, but not, not for painting, yes, but not necessarily for landscaping. These little I mean, things. Yeah, that, what Barbara's showing. I wouldn't yeah. use them for lands, most landscaping okay. things. Okay. No. Well, I mean, if you have something that's an, um, it's already kind of made, you could use maybe that, but, um, it, you know, we have, we make landscaping things with so many different stuff that you, you know, it could come into play, but for painting, like wood things, the silicone tray is, is really helpful. And I um, think if you paint uh, flower petals, the, no, I haven't sticky. tried that. I have one of those no. trays. I haven't tried flower petals. I would I not use it. Yeah. I would I not would. use it for flower petals. I think the stickiness of it is too strong. I just use double stick scotch tape lightly. Okay. Glad press and seal. Yes, glad yeah. press and seal. Mm -hmm. Yep, that would work great. A lot of talk about that lately. That would be good. Yep. Well, it's it's been on chat. Well, yeah, there's been a lot of messages and that's how I found out about it. And so I went and bought some mm -hmm. and guess what folks, it, it works, works wonderful. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's <laughs> just, yeah, but be cautious with anything that's paper, especially thin paper using that press and seal. I, I can attest to that from personal experience. <laughs> Why? I don't find it to be that sticky. And I uh, take a piece Some of it of, is, some of it is. I take a piece of mat board and wrap it around the mat board with the uh, not sticky side against the mat board and the sticky yeah. side out. So it gives it a, a taunt, you know, so it's on there good. And when you're painting them, they come right off. Oh. But it holds, yeah. it holds things long enough to be painted. Yeah. And then it pulls loose. And what, once that paint hits that pressing seal, it loses its sticky. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so but I she's no talking problem. about she's talking about one, the brand, Glad, aren't you? Glad. Yeah. Press and seal. Not just any press and seal, just the Glad, because she I right. I can't speak for any other brand. So. I can't either. I haven't used yeah. anything else right. because they're so I don't think anyone, yeah, I don't think anyone else makes something quite like that. It's completely right. different than just regular. Oh, Rusty has got something. Mm -hmm. This, they have some of the Rusty has this, something. This was given to me by the Kent Association for the Blind so that I can use things on worktops without them slipping away from me. And I, it's a bigger sheet, really, but I decided perhaps I could find a use for half of it. So I've cut it in half. There it is. Yes. <laughs> okay, you see, it's got that much hold. That's oh, two wow. bits of it there. That's a yeah. lot. Just it in half. So I'm going to get the sack if they find out, I suppose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. And if I may talk, you didn't mention dental tools. 
dental tools very useful yeah. for yes. dental yeah tools. i did men mention the dental tools yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. also if you like me you go hang out on railway um exhibitions because the <laughs> railway exhibitions they send little bags of landscaping not too expensively and my favorite the holding things while i'm working on them is a wooden clothes peg. My mother's, probably my grandmother's, they're really ancient, but I can put them in the kiln as well if I want to fire anything. Oh. So that because they're wood, they, they doesn't matter. But they, they'll hold papers together, they'll hold things out while you're cutting out. Very useful, just the old clothes peg. And I'm British, so I'm IT. I don't like to spend money if I can avoid it. The polystyrene, the polystyrene, like white snow bubbles that come round um, television sets and things. Very handy. You can slice it up with a bread saw. You can stick it down. It will raise the level. You can stick things in it. You can put trees in it. You can do anything you want. And it's pretty useful. And you can also cover it with a layer of tissue paper. If you want a flatter surface, glue the tissue paper down, paint the tissue paper. Very useful. And I, if I can learn to get the lid off things without having to see, these I'm going to show another time. But this is the sort of plotting you can get for trees, all these different colours from a um, train fair. And that's all different colours for different trees. So hold that up. You can get. That's just a few of them. I've got yes, more some colors. train foams. Yes, I, I have. Every, lots. I bought them from every colour they had right. because it was the last time the lady who was selling it was going to be there. She was very ill and she was on oxygen while she was demonstrating. So that's dedication. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, those little styrofoam packing things to stick your flowers in after you're making them just while you're yeah, to very let handy. them dry. Yeah, yeah so handy. those come in really handy. And of course, you've already mentioned that you can get uh, plastic uh, paper covered wire. I have a selection, as you can probably see. All the wiring, the flower wiring. Size wiring. Oh, yeah. Very useful for all sorts of things. I made chairs with it last time, but for little chairs. There we go. Someone yeah, has work. their television on and it's really causing some back noise. Peter, is it, uh, is it here? Do you think? I don't turn know. Turn the telly down, darling, would you please? Can you turn the telly down a bit? <laughs> oh, that yeah, that's it. it. Yeah, that's, that's it. my husband. I'm sorry. He's very good, but it's an open, open plan place. And One of the... Yeah. One of the uh, materials that wasn't mentioned is there's a grass mat. Um, it's quite large. You can cut it down to the size you need. And I don't have mine on hand. I'm going to turn off my mic and yell for the kid to get it for me. <laughs> yes, I've even seen people use um, AstroTurf and for one inch scale stuff. Similar to that, uh, I did an Wait, entire garden. Okay. I, no. Um, okay. I, I no used... luck. She must be having her, her ears on. I had I, a friend that used um, the, the, the upholstery from the automobiles mm -hmm. for grass. Oh, it's, re it's reasonably priced that way. Oh, um, interesting. You can use terry cloth also and use yeah. the loose side. I, I glued that down to a large garden that I did one time. And then about once every six months or so, when it got dusty, I just took everything off. And because the grass was glued down, the terry cloth was glued down, I was able to vacuum it off and <laughs> everything. So it's an easy care and it works really good. It looks really good. You could have also <laughs> used that for the, the, the terry town, and they've also used Sorry. it for as well. Blew it down. I have a couple of tools, uh, things I use in flower making and uh, landscaping that I want to show you. When we get to doing bases, uh, you might want, oh, here. Uh, it's just a small um, palette knife. 
it's very help helpful for uh, smooth, you know, spreading on mm -hmm. your uh, paper clay or your sculpt mold or whatever you use there. And then another thing I made uh, that you might want to hold flowers while they're drying is you take a board or a tongue depressor and you glue on these little spools. Yes. They're just, you can buy these spools in bags in your uh, local craft store or wherever. They're just like thread spools, the empty thread spools, and you can get them in all kinds of sizes. These are kind of medium. I've got some smaller, some bigger, and they're very handy for sticking your flowers in while they're drying and things like that. And when I use foam, when I use foam, I prefer to work with the foam that, the kind that you can get wet I like that foam oh, for doing hard. bases, at doing bases yeah. and for um, uh, sticking flowers in and stuff. I like that uh, rather than the heavy, uh, heavier foam that crumbles. Yeah, she's that. talking about the Oasis foam, and then she just doesn't yeah. wet the the wet foam. You just, just don't, don't wet. wet. You don't wet it, but you it's the kind you can wet and put flowers in in a bowl. But it's. Uh -huh. um, I've seen two different kinds of oasis, a green and then a, a, a brown. Yeah, either kind. way. It doesn't matter. Once you've you dried flowers and you don't get that wet, you can stick things in more reliably. Oh, yeah. The green one is has to be wet for the green for live flowers. I can stick things in either the green or the brown when they're dry and I don't get them wet. Yeah. Yeah, and the fine the fine wired stuff, the the um the wet oasis foam works. It's yeah, a lot easier to get your, get your fine it wires in there. It doesn't like heavier stuff without no. being water. Right. Mm -hmm. so uh, Shirley, Fosey, uh, Shirley, Fosey, please tell us what you use for your making flowers, what you <laughs> shape them in. For doing what for the flowers? When you're shaping the, the petals and stuff. Oh, she flowers. wants to know what you're using for your padding. Yeah, show yeah. us your padding because that, that's something different. It's just a strip of um, fleece fabric and it works just like the fun foam. Uh, I usually do it at least two or three layers thick and it shapes your uh, flower and the flower pops right back up. It are, you using, are you using poly or cotton? Uh, this is just uh, the, the poly... Um, fleece fabric. Okay. Yeah, and the, the flower shapes real good in it and it springs back so you don't have to dig your flowers out of the out of the foam, foam right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. fun foam likes to hold on to them. Mm -hmm. But that's another, not a bad thing on quarter scale. Another yeah. source of tools. I've used it for tiny ones art. or big ones. Sorry. Uh, nail art. They, they, you can get cheap tools for nail art. And they're very good. These are the ball tools, and there's another one too, but I'm using it somewhere art. else. Oh, nail art, yeah. Nail art. Look online, you'd be surprised what you can find. Yeah, if you go to tools. eBay and you look for nail art tools, the ball tools are dirt cheap to get they are. them. You get and them they're for good enough. They, 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 last for well. set. they last well, and they're on wood, so they're sturdy enough. Some of them are on an acrylic. Um, acrylic handles like this too and they'll have a swirl on them but yeah that, that's another good place to get them really inexpensive i just put i put in the in the chat section i posted so you all need to look at it a link to hanky panky crafts oh, mm -hmm. uh it's a good source for wires flower wires for papers for flowers for punches uh patterns etc um do not search on Google for hanky panky because you will get a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to put hanky panky crafts.com. I was gonna say don't forget the crafts. <laughs> yeah don't forget the crafts because you will be in trouble. So I put that it's in the chat uh section as a source. Yeah. Sharita don't don't yeah. you sell the papers also? Uh I sell the paper yes but uh, it's the Japanese silk paper. Some, some people call it Japanese cray paper. Uh, yes. Yeah, I have tons of it. 
Yeah, yeah. Anita has mm -hmm. some too. Okay. And then what I wanted to show was with the mouse pads, I bought a gray mouse pad like from eBay or somewhere and the gray is neutral. And then yeah. I cut it so I have three different levels of mouse pads so that when you want it real cupped, you got three, is three glued together. Then you have two glued together and for smaller scales, you may want just one. So on this little tray, like it was from um, Michaels or somebody that oh, that's a good you idea. have three different levels right. of uh, thickness of mouse pad. Oh, cool. and it is gray, so it's really neutral. I like the gray. Yeah, it it'll show every color. Oh, good one. But you, if you just put in the search engine gray mouse pads and see, you know, see what comes up. But uh, it's uh, Rita, I love it. Has Rita, anybody you been able to tell about your alcohol ink? Oh, uh, for the alcohol ink, I use um, sharpies, and I make my own alcohol ink, and uh, I have like tons of it and I just like when the during Christmas time like uh, Walmart had that ten dollar sharpie thirties markers or whatever it was so I got a couple of those but I always buy, look for sharpies on sale and I cut it apart right at the neck there and and using tweezers and uh, uh, wire cutters or whatever just to hold it so but and you're gonna get your hands you know, messed up, but just use the, I'll use 90% alcohol. Yep. And um, you put, get like a, a bottles. Let me get the, one of the bottles. And you want to um, make your own. Is Sharita, are you a paper crafter? Um, I, you would think so, all the paper and stuff I got. <laughs> Because that's an old paper crafting uh, trick. Right. And so I buy empty bottles like this, and you can get them from the different craft stores. And then I put drop the Sharpie felt, and I usually put two or three Sharpies in one bottle, and then add the 90% alcohol. And so, and then I brush it on the paper, or you can blend it and blend colors or whatever you want. But the alcohol ink is permanent. And so it makes a like instead of using acrylic pa uh, paint, it's going to make the paper be thinner than using the acrylic paint. Yeah, and those so, of you who are signed up for the flower cart, uh, we're going to be having a special session this weekend about some of what she's talking about and some things you can do with the acrylic paints. So, yeah, and uh, Marsha, did I send you that uh, about the um, Sharpies? Um, yeah, you sent me a deal about making the alcohol ink. Right, um, and then I, the paper, a sample of the paper, the way the paper looks, so you can blend like the yellow. Oh, at the bottom. yeah, I think that's yeah. on there. Yes. So, yeah, yes. if you want to share that, that's fine. That's on yeah. the files. On the okay, files. Okay. files. Yeah, the okay. hardest thing about alcohol inks and alcohol markers are getting the, getting the blending right. Yeah, I, I love it, I, but it's addictive because you could just keep doing it and I probably have smelled too much alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> and every Teresa time I switch to vodka. <laughs> <laughs> and because of COVID, you can't hardly find the alcohol. So whenever I see it, I buy it just to have it. Well, so you, I can also, it. you can also oh. use uh, Everclear. Any kind of white lightning works too. You just use some um, uh, water, um, sterilized water to, um, to dilute the alcohol. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Copic is 70, hold on, let me see if I can find, find it, because I make my own, um, bl my own blending solution, mm -hmm. there's no, there's no re I use so much of it that there's no reason for me. You to make your own it. white lightning? <laughs> no, I make my own blending solution for the alcohol markers. She is I, in Kentucky. No, I know. Yeah, <laughs> here. That's easy to try. I was going to say that. 
<laughs> Let me see. Um, okay, the blender solution, if you make your own, it's 77% ethanol is what Copic uses. And so you just do the math on however much you're making up. And um, this is uh, Everclear and uh, what do I want to say? What's sterilized water? Distilled water. Yeah. You use distilled, yeah, anything that's yeah, anything that's sterile so that you don't have any anything that's going to grow in it. And I make my own blender solution because I go through one of these every year or two. What was your recipe? Uh, it's seventy-seven percent ethanol solution, so it's just dist uh, distilled water and um, your ethanol. So anybody else have any um, little tools or materials they really like to use? I have one, um, trying to, it's a, called a bead scoop. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. and, and you can see it has this um, point, kind of pointed tip. Yep. And what I like it for is the little bags of flower color or landscaping material, the real fine stuff. Mm -hmm. I can stick this in a bag Sprinkle and, it. and I, I, I pull it out and I, of course I'm using a paper plate underneath my you know object that I'm gonna sprinkle it on. And then, and I can also use this to scoop it up from the paper plate. Um, but I, I really love it. It's called a bead scoop. That's my nice. best landscape, not normal tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good too. Like I got all these pedals on the, on the mouse pad and, you, and say you're done with them and you want to get them up. That, that's real good for that too. Mm -hmm. Another product that um, works well when you're doing your miniature plant stuff is a product called Flower Soft. I don't know I if they're still one. making it. Can you guys, I have been able to still find it, but I'm not sure they're still manufacturing it. It comes in, you can get it in kits of different colors. You can buy the individual uh, and it comes in different size canisters. Um, I think and this is, this is a very oh. finely, yes, this is a very, if you look at, if you look at Fern, she's got a whole kit of it. I do too, but mine's not in the nice box any longer. Um, and then I bought some other colors along with it, but this works really well. It's a very great. finely shredded plastic and it works great on your, your vines and your bushes and especially anything you're doing in the smaller scales. It's perfect. What's for it that. called? And it lasts forever. It does last forever. You would be surprised how much is wow. packed into these wow. little containers because it's really packed in here fine. When you work with it, you're going to want to use a large sheet of paper or something, um, you know, on your surface because you'll you'll want to put the extra stuff back in this container. But there's a lot packed in this little container, and you'll have to fluff it up. It's called Flower Soft. Uh, www .flower, um hyphen soft.com is what the canister says, but I don't know if they're still making it. I know the last time I looked for it, it was getting hard to find. I think Alpha Stamps carries it, or they did. Yeah. Good, thank you, Anita. What A lot of the paper you? crafting places carried it, but I, I don't know, yeah. I think last year I was looking for a specific color and it was, I, I, I did find it on eBay, but I couldn't find it in store. the normal places that normally, where I normally found it before. Okay. They only do multicolored sets now that I can find anyway. Most, most like are a lot of landscaping. You're going to probably want a sidewalk. My favorite concrete is uh, the paper egg cartons. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the foam egg cartons and the paper egg cartons both come in handy for uh, papier mache. You can use it for bricks, papier mache, walls, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. We'll be taught. Yeah, we'll have a whole session on that. Right. Yeah. I'll use them for castle walls. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stones. 
Anyone have any questions? Oh, baby. I got um, in late. What? I have a question. Um, did you talk about using that fine powdery grass stuff that they use in trains? Yes. <laughs> yeah, because um, the one Yes, there's all there. different types you can pick okay. up. Yeah, and I said that Hobby Lobby is now carrying most Hobby Lobby stores in the United States carry small packs of this, like half of this size. Even mm -hmm. this is this is the large stuff from the train stores. We don't all have Hobby Lobby. <laughs> you can order um, Hobby Lobby if you're stateside, though. No problem there. Yeah. What is the, may I may I say good night? I've enjoyed myself so much. I've overstayed. I caught him in the Yes. Hour. Good night, Rusty. 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 See you Tuesday. Great fun. See you Tuesday. See you Saturday, I hope. Is I'm it two, um, See you Saturday. Is it Saturday. 1 or 2 a.m. there now? One. See how I am when I come back from that word I'm not allowed to use. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. I've been thinking about you a lot. How was your COVID? Oh, she's gone. Oh. Paula, I have was... something that I bought from Catherine Gray in the UK that she uses. She makes flowers and sells them. And this is a pad. She has a little blue pad on her website. But when I ordered, this is what I got. And I cut a piece out of it to use for because I do quarter scale and I wanted just a short piece. And what I've noticed is there are two pieces that are glued together of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he liked this so much better to use for making her flowers. Yeah, and that comes as a packing rigged. material. Yeah. No, this is not packing material particularly. I have yeah, packing you, material. No, if I you want the packing material, this is a different, this is more like the fun foam than mm -hmm. like the packing material. Yeah. This is, uh, it may come as packing material too. Yeah, it comes in know. black too. But right. it's a better, it's a better quality for this kind of thing than this is. That is another packing material that uh, mm -hmm. my husband brought for me to use but this is different and I really really like this and when Sharita showed the different I liked what she showed because she had yeah. she had a thickness like this but I like this the uh, other thicknesses too right that's pretty yeah. clever oh, handy. that's a really I got fine this from fun. Catherine Gray from Templewood Miniatures in uh, the UK some time ago I have some black someplace but I don't know where it's at right now Paula, what was the brand um, of the uh, stuff that you got from Germany, the green stuff? Oh. Boosh, let's see. Hold on. Let's make sure it really B -U -S -B -U -S -H. is. B-U-S-B-U-S-H. Yeah, I'm going to. Here's the front of the package. Oops. But the back is Bush G-M-B-H and Company. KG. I'll show you that one. Let me too there close. We go. Pull it back a little bit. Too, oh, far, too close. Yeah. And too, far. too far. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> Let me do my overhead. <laughs> Gripe and complain. Oh, hold on. This isn't going to work. We will well. complain if we can. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> We're not complaining. We're just trying to guide you. <laughs> is the deal here part of the time my cursor will go to the screen and part of the time it will not talk amongst yourself for a second let me see okay one of the things with putting uh, the turf down that i don't think is a new idea at all when i put my fine turf down i do quarter scale i don't put it down with glue i always put down a thick layer of avocado green paint Mm -hmm. And then I put my turf on it and press it down on it, let it dry. And then when it's dry, then I can take and tap it and all the excess will come off. Because if you put glue down instead of paint, then if you have any bare spots, then you have shiny glue showing through. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you put the avocado green paint, then you don't have any shininess showing through. So no paint. I mean, no glue, right. just paint. Good idea. And, I guess and that's adding... also true. If well, using different ground colors color. based on different product um, colors. Right. right. Avocado. I seem, the reason I said avocado is because it seems to me that that's the one that works for me. And when I put fine turf down, 
I know it comes in different shades. I always mix it up a little. Yeah. So it's not just one color because if yeah. you look in your yard, unless yeah. you're a real gardener, you don't have one perfect shade of green. So I always throw a little bit of this and a little bit of that in in my fine turf before I put it down. Exactly, okay. it's more realistic. I don't think these are any new ideas, but that's all I've got to offer. <laughs> no, but it's good. It's okay, Pat. And I, when you're doing, uh, I also put down when I did the saloon, I did not use grass. I used the Woodland Scenic's uh, ground cover that looks like dirt. And so you paint that brown before you right. put down the glue, regardless of, you know, whatever it is you're doing. And I bought a bush. And I put snow on it. And I'll tell you that the glue that I put on there to put the snow on it, the powder on it, turned the snow green. Oh. So I had to uh, use a glue that wouldn't do that. And it took me some time to find one. And believe it or not, it was yes glue. Jackie, uh, that, that was because the actual material was not color fast. The right. green that you were putting on the white on top was not color fast. Well, that was evident, but this was a bought tree from uh, the, one of the packages that comes from, you know, the scenic stuff you buy in Hobby Lobby or wherever, you know, you find the little trees that are already where they have the packages of them. And I had bought some of the little trees and that's what happened. And I thought, well, this is really weird. How am I going to get the snow to stay on there without turning green snow? So the yes glue did it. That was the thing that got to me. It was the yes glue. Well, the the, what it is, yeah, what, what it is is the water from the whatever glue you were using right. is, is causing the the green you know, product like underneath to run. Right. Not color fast. But that that the yes glue is kind of like a waxy glue. So I guess that's it didn't have the as much water in it. It was a waxy type, the yes glue is, the wallpaper paste, yes, you know. Got it, Paula. I have a line, Maria Zach. She is in the Washington, D.C. area. She is the founder of an organization called Nations in Action. What was that? What now? Somebody wasn't muted. Yeah. Okay. Got it, Paula. It showed. Yeah, I, I do. I paint my my ground. I, I've never seen green dirt. So <laughs> grass, grows, grass grows on top of dirt. And I like to have patches every once in a while that don't have any grass. And so I don't want green showing. I want brown. Right. Yeah, that makes I sense. Paint, I paint my ground brown, and then I build on top of the ground whatever um, landscaping I'm doing. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. That's just me. <laughs> Good idea. I'm sitting here. Hey, I'm, sitting no, I'm, here. I'm with you. <laughs> I've been ordering things online again, and I'm sitting here unpacking uh, a shipment. And one of the things I got was a, a 288, uh, a one 288 scale house. And so I always check to make sure everything is in it. And it has a motherboard that has the fine um, trims in it and some of those had come out of the motherboard and were in danger of being broken and so i just took the glad press and seal and that's why i'm bringing it up the glad press and seal and made an envelope okay here i come uh, in me so i can see what i'm doing Oh, well, it doesn't matter, I guess. <clears throat> I still can't see you. I haven't turned on the camera yet. There but, you go. Uh, there she is. All right. Now, I'm hard to see anyhow, but I made an, I 
covered it with the um, seal. crescent seal, wrapped it around it once so that it pressed against itself. Can you see that? I, uh -huh. I'm sorry, my lighting is so bad. Um, and then I just cut around it and left a little margin. So that's just in press and seal. And that's after I, I put the little pieces that had come loose. Um, they're the long ones there. Uh, wow. That are above above the shingles. Can you see that? Yeah. 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 So the press and seal is holding everything together. Now. Wow. Great product. I just learned about it when everybody was talking about it on a phone. Well, I never thought to use it until people started talking about it. I didn't either. Yeah. I immediately went to the grocery store and bought it. And it's just has really, there's all kinds of uses for it in miniatures. Right. Especially when you're doing this really tiny stuff. What kind of things do you use it for? It's new to me. To hold thing, your tiny, okay, I'm working in very fine, small, micro, uh, and some of the pieces are, if you breathe, it'll blow away. So, namely, I use it to hold things down so that they don't fly off. Good um, idea. So, you know, you can, you can sit there and build on it. When I, when I open one of these packages and get all the pieces out, I try to make sure that I dump it all onto a piece of press and seal, paper mache over it. Uh, and this is one part of my hobbit house, which was going to be in a hill. Uh, and there's a staircase. You can see the stairs going up, okay? And the, the walls of the staircase were done with egg carton. Right. right. Looks great. I, huh? Looks great. Nice. Well, yeah, I haven't gone all the way with it because I still have to stain them. Um, and I use either chalk pastels or watercolors work very well. Um, and then I spray it with a matte spray. Um, the whole thing will be electrified. Here's my closet. So uh -huh. cute. Yeah. Part of the um, stonework. Um, so that, that's one of the things you can do with the... the uh, yeah. We have a, we're, I, I forget if it's the third, third or fourth meeting that we're going to be addressing that. So you'll have to bring that back, B. Oh, it's always behind me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never I, I got it. I'll show I don't you. Have, I don't the third have room. meeting. Okay. But what I discovered was, and this is what stopped me, what I discovered was if I put this whole thing together, I have no place to put it. It, <laughs> it is too big. It's half scale and, and it's a it's a a mountain, a hill, and there's just no place I, I have no place to put it. Micro so minis, have, you're gonna have to go to micro minis. If she does. <laughs> well, I, am, yeah, I, know. Does. I know she does. <laughs> That's a common but, problem, BJ, well, with all of us. Yeah, but I, I, uh, you have to understand. I, I started out with micro minis. Well, then That's go back to it. <laughs> go back to it. I, I have. have a tool that I want to show you while I'm thinking about it. And it's okay. one of those that uh, she showed that she put it in a uh, handle thing to hold. But this is the clip, the, the like alligator okay. type clip. Yeah, I've got some and of those too. What we did was make our own. And my husband got the alligator clips and he used some resin put a little container and put, put it in here. So I had this to sit up on its own to hold things. Nice tool. And we've got this, uh, as a matter of fact, Allison sent this to me at one of the first name events that uh, name day had. Mm -hmm. She, when she had a little thing, I signed up to do this and her little goodie bag for whatever had this in it. And so I have two of these 
and I wanted some more. So uh, this is resin and it holds it. And I just love having, you know, more than one or two to use. And we have- What is the alligator clip attached to? What is that long skinny piece? It's a cable. Yes, cable? it's a ca cable. Oh, yeah. okay. And it is. So it's flexible, huh? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. You and can, you just you taped the alligator clip to it? It has a... The, the, it clamps to it. Yeah. Oh, it, okay. It yeah, it's clamped very securely onto it. And then it's stuck through the resin. So there you got it. It's very secure. You, you oh, can use okay. electrical wire, some of the large gauge electrical wire, and either... Um, I like if you leave the coating, the plastic coating on the copper, you can do the same thing with a copper wire that's electrical wire and just leave the plastic coating on it. That's a little flexible. Mm -hmm. Has anyone used Hiram's rock hard water putty for to get a stone look? Mm -hmm. We used that. We took some of the uh, floral foam and carved out uh, like the side of a wall, like you're doing with the egg cartons. And we would carve it out and then we would use this Hiram's rock hard water putty and you mix it with a little water and you paint it over there and let it dry and it looks like real stone. It takes paint or dyes or stains very well also. But you want to do it outside. You do not want to flush it down your sink. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's good stuff and you get a container of it like huge. Or like you know, I'll five stick with the egg cartons and they're free. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you, and you can work inside. Perry, is that H I R A M? Uh, I think so. Hiram H I R A M Rock Hard Water Putty. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot or your plumbing store should have it also. I have a can of it right here. I'll show you. Yeah, oh. show us. <laughs> By all means. Uh, Paula, while she's looking for that, uh, one of the gals in, our, in my club that is going to do uh, egg cart and masonry, she's on the list, uh, she's working on a cliff now out of egg cartons. Oh boy. <laughs> so she'll have that ready, hopefully. When <laughs> Did you say a cliff? A cliff. Oh, wow. You know, you could even use clay and sculpt it. That's and dirt. Make well, yeah. your clay and yeah. then put your Hiram's over it to really get some nice texture. Yeah, this is Durham's walk, rock hard water putty. Durham. So is it in the um, plumbing department? Uh, yes. Stick stays put, will not shrink. Mm -hmm. mm. I don't think I've ever used mine, but our club years ago had a session with that. Again? Thank you. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Kitty cats. <laughs> Got it? <laughs> yes, yep. thank you. Frankie's trying to eat tab with his food. <laughs> One other thing, uh, one other tip I had is the dirt. For the dirt, like it, either in the landscaping or in the flower pot, um, the seed starter. That's usually it. You're gonna be fine. Should be out soon. And uh, I grind it up. I got a little coffee grinder that I only use for that. And I grind it up, and you have to watch it because it'll get a little dust cloud <laughs> with it. So, you, <laughs> yeah. so, but it gets a real, real fine, and it's real lightweight. And so, or you can bake dirt, like a nice grade of dirt, a uh, bag of dirt, a small bag, bake it, and then grind it up in there. The thing with that, you know, it has like the little, um, the white specks in it. So it looks more realistic because when you grind it up, you get the little white and, you know, yeah. dark. But the seed starter, I really like because it's so fine. It's real fine. I've used coffee grounds, like for, yeah. for the one inch stuff. Yeah. 
And also I've used the dirt in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. What kind of grinder do you use? It's a coffee grinder. You can just get old cheap coffee grinder. Uh, and, and just of course you're gonna only use it for that, for the dirt or whatever, or for crafts or whatever. Uh, I, but it's I, just I, uh, like a bowl flavored coffee. I dry my teeth. use the dirt from her backyard and it started to move. <laughs> While it was on the day, it, there were little bugs and everything else in it. So I wouldn't uh -huh. suggest that at all. Oh yeah. I if you to, if you use any natural stuff, you gotta I, bake it. You have to microwave it. Yeah. yeah. No, no, you need to bake it. Yeah. Don't, don't yeah. the thing. No. You gotta you gotta bake it. Bake it, freeze it, bake it. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. like, um, but I use my um, the tea leaves, uh, uh, the dried, tea, you know, you let it the bag dry, mm -hmm. and then oh, you know, it, it, it's free. <laughs> You know, you're going to throw it away anyway, so it's free if you save it and then collect it together. <laughs> Something we've used for um, one inch scale gravel. This will come up later in this series, but I'll show you while I'm, I've got oh, it here. But it's um, bird grit. <laughs> and it uh, is in, oh yeah, you know, a mixture of colors and it looks like real gravel. Uh, it's too big for quarter scale, I'm sure, but for one inch, I used to use it for that. Where did you get it? At the pet store or the pet department. Oh, it's just oh. bird grit. I guess they use it to help digest their food. Yes. Yep. Well, chickens yeah. need it to, otherwise- Chicken grit, same thing. <laughs> okay. What's that? Chicken grit is the same thing. Yeah, or she yeah, it's yeah. not as fine as what she has though. Right. Hers is for smaller birds. But yeah. you can still use a oyster shell and the chicken grit and just pound it up. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This this says on here for small birds. So mm -hmm. yeah. Like for parakeets and cockatoos parakeets and, and stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yep. One uh, of the tools that I like the best is this tweezers that you have yeah. to pinch to open it. I love those. I use them on everything. And then um, I noticed that you use the alligator clips. But I have these kind that, that are kind of like that, but they're flat yeah. and smooth. So I don't get those little divots in my paper. Mm -hmm. right. Hold it up again. Let me see it. All right. Let me turn it sideways. Yeah, you used to get. Oh, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. those clips too. Yep, I'm. Yep, but those are at the automotive shop too. Yeah. I've seen the ones great. that are like that are that are called the hem uh, clips for like you can do for hemming, and it, oh, it's smooth. Yeah. And they're plastic. I like, uh, but I like the smooth part. Yeah, that those I the clips, too. those clips yeah. are smooth, so they don't make a dent. Right. The grass mat that I was telling you about earlier, my daughter came, finally came back and she got it out for me. It's 18 by 27 inches. So that's going to cover a lot of grass area. Um, and it's made by Model Builder Supply. Yeah. Now I got it from Virtual Dollhouse. She also carries it. Model Builder Supply every now and then has a sale of 25 or 20 percent off, or so. Um, from you know, if we order from them online, uh huh, they have a coupon on the back of the magazine mm. that uh, they're like for a certain length of time or by a certain date. If you use a coupon, it's 15, 20, 25 percent off, depends. Wow, cool. Well, it depends on how much you spend as to how much you get to take off. Sometimes, yes. Yeah. Sometimes if it's off on the whole order, usually around Christmas time, but sometimes right. during the year, it's if you use it by a certain time, it's 20% or you'll get half price off of your highest, you know, one item. Okay. Are we pretty much done now uh do you think with this discussion or are we 
I, I have one questions? little other weird thing I want to show you. That's the fun part. It's going to be getting enough light. Let's see. Let's see. What it is, it, it's, um, there's a uh, store here in San Diego that sells acrylic and in the scrap pile you can get. But you can also use those uh, sticks from Home Depot that you use to paint, paint sticks. Paint, and I wrap um, uh, uh, sandpaper around it, different grits. And if, you, if your hands are a little sore or stiff, you have a, a good grip on it and you can stand in all different directions. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Good idea. That also yeah. works well with um, popsicle sticks and tongue depressors and that kind of stuff right. too. For yeah. smaller tools, yes. Yep. Very handy. And um, um, 